Good morning, Bistro fans. So um, today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our senior pets, and I'm actually very familiar with senior dogs. <clears throat> um, for many years in Greyhound Rescue, I would always be the one to volunteer to take the seniors just because I think they're very sweet and docile and many times very laid back and acclimate to the home really easily. And at this point in my life, I actually have three senior dogs. My Husky turned 14 in September, and I have an Italian Greyhound who's turning 14 in April, and then I have a Mud, <clears throat> a rescue dog who is approximately 10, 11 years old. So my Husky is the one that we've uh, maybe had the most challenges with most recently. So she, I got her <clears throat> when she was about five months old, and I got her from a former boss, and she was a pet store dog, so I really honestly had no idea what kind of life I was going to have with her or what kind of health, health problems I was going to see along the way. And I, honestly, I can say she's been fairly healthy. At about six years old, she started having some incontinence issues that we recognized and started working with. And as of recently, we've had uh, some more incontinence issues. And, and it's incontinence can be very strange. It can be either stool or it can be urine. Um, and some dogs are very aware of it and some dogs are not so it depends on where they are and when it happens So I would say my husky Sasha is very aware of when it happens It it typically happens right after she falls asleep and then she feels it so she wakes back up um, And when I when all this started happening she used to have very small small incontinence puddles where this most recent incident it was the whole bed it was very copious amounts very large amounts so we got her in right away to see dr. Cole and of course her sacrum was out of place which is pretty common with dogs with incontinence issues it can be a spinal impingement or something is not in alignment in the spinal column <clears throat> and then I started using corn silk so this is from nature sunshine this is corn silk is an herb that is really good for um, most of the time you'll see it in herbal books it's listed as bed wetting um, but we really started getting that in her diet and that has made a huge difference and it made a difference with the chiropractic in just three or four days that we saw the incontinence starting to diminish and we did some homeopathics at the time as well and to this day we haven't had any issues for about 14 days now so a couple weeks we're doing good <clears throat> however I do have her on some other supplements as well obviously being 14 years old we have a couple other concerns. She's a little bit stiff, a little bit arthritic in the back end. So we have been using the Pet Relief Edibite treats with her. She gets one in the morning and one at night. And I noticed a difference pretty quickly just in probably three or four days of adding the hemp treats on along with her food. Um, I went to let her in. She went outside to do her business and I went to let her in. She came bounding across the backyard and jumped over the cat because it was in the way. And so I that was pretty much um, sold me as a, a believer in the hemp treats that they obviously were helping out. I do some Total Zymes or Herb Smith's uh, Microflora, their digestive enzymes. Just because as we get older, our pH in our stomach isn't the same. A lot of times we need a little bit more help digesting our food, so <clears throat> we do some digestive enzymes with her. Milk thistle, milk thistle is always great to support the liver. Um, over the years, a lot of times our liver collects toxins and stores it, so just a little bit of uh, mild liver detox and some cleansing, but milk thistle is really good to support the liver. The liver. I always have a essential fatty acid on board. Today I pulled the omega-3s. I switch around. Um, I think right now we're doing coconut oil, but I switch around between fish oils and plant-based oils, so they all have different properties. She's not picky, so we don't have any allergy issues, so it's really easy to flip-flop around whatever I have. I have used uh, flax, hemp, forage, coconut, um, krill, sardines, uh, salmon so there's there's cod liver oil there's quite a variety of oils that you can use <clears throat> I also do cell salt so number one cell salt is fantastic for incontinence incontinent dogs um, that's calc floor and it's really good at helping the elasticity of the tissue so a lot of times what happens with the bladder is the sphincter muscles become relaxed and they don't they don't work properly anymore so number one cell salt can be really good for incontinence issues it's also really good at helping fend off viruses as well as a bunch of other things. So really like our, our cell salts here. <clears throat> and then I do a couple other herbs um, mixed in. So we do EW, which is for eye health. I also do the RSTC, which is helpful for, again, some stiffness or stiffness 
and once you get moving you feel a little better so there's different if you ever watch your pet there's different stiffness attributes sometimes animals are always stiff or people are always stiff sometimes you're stiff upon waking or getting up and then once you get moving you loose, loosen up and you feel better so different different ways of how that stiffness comes on could lead to, lead to different remedies to use. The senior dog from Dr. Besant again um, helps with some cognitive, uh, as our dogs get older, just the cognitive functions. And <clears throat> I can't say we do this on a daily basis. I'm, I try to be pretty ritual with some of the things that I know are gonna help with her aging and her incontinence. And sometimes one over the other person in the house um, is a little bit more diligent about it. Depends on our time schedule too. So sometimes she only gets everything once. Again, if we have presenting symptoms, then we might be a little bit more active to make sure she gets it two or three times throughout the day. I do feed twice a day. I feed raw. Sasha was switched on to a raw diet at about, uh, probably probably about 12 months old. She had some, some digestive issues and I, I just had had it and went back to kind of my roots of what we did with our Yorkie Max growing up. Switched her to a raw diet. So she's been on a raw diet for over, over 13 years. I think that's really attributed to her health and her wellness. She's, um, her teeth are looking great. She has, she has a couple fatty, fatty tumors, but nothing to be alarmed of. We do also incorporate essential oils when necessary, as well as homeopathic. So, you know, this is kind of the full gamut of what works for Sasha. Um, all of our pets are different as they age gracefully. We all have, there's all, all different things that pop up, same thing with ourselves. So sometimes it's just looking at the dog or the person individually and acknowledging what they need at that time. So this may change completely in another three or four months as, as Sasha continues her physical journey on this earth. And I know she'll be with me forever, um, just in a different form, but I'm gonna do whatever I can now to support her um, while she's here with me in my home. So if you have any questions about any of the supplements or maybe your pet is aging and you have questions about how to support them, stop in. Any of the staff here can help you out to get started. And we hope you have a great day. Thanks.